गुड इवनिंग माय फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एम आई ऑडिबल कौन कौन है एम आई ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल एम आई ऑडिबल I hope I am audible and visible. Let me start. If any problem, please comment. Today I will continue. Continue some of the. Today I covered. Yesterday I covered from 1920 one up to 1925. some of the important areas i missed naturally i have to reenter into that period that period that period yes. in 1922 in 1922 After August, whole of North Bengal experienced a severe flood. Millions people suffered. People in millions suffered. And that time, Bengal Provincial Congress Committee sent him to the tour and inspect the flood affected areas in North Bengal. आचार्य प्रफुल्ल चंद्र राय फ्रम नर्थ बेंगल फ्लाड रिलीफ फंड एंड इंट्रस्टेड सुभाष चंद्र बोस उथ रेसपन्सिबिलिटी अब डिसबार्सिंग दें डिसबार्सिंग दें आचार्य प्रफुल्ल चंद्र राय फ्रम द नर्थ बेंगल फ्लाड रिलीफ फंड एंड इंट्रस्टेड सुभाष चंद्र बोस उथ रेसपन्सिबिलिटी of disbursing the same and acharya prafulla chandra made an appeal to the people to donate to that fund yes and acharya's appeal was like this for the purpose of gathering correct information and to help the distressed people mr subhash chandra bose and mr jyotindranath dasgupta went to santahar and for the first time the name of subhash chandra was published in bengali daily anandabazar patrika from that time anandabazar big patrika became a magazine to project subhash chandra from those days On the contrary, is the Amrit Bazar Patrika and that group of Patrika of Amrit Bazar were always against Subhash Chandra, all along. And and remember, also in Bengal, a group of and this Amrit Bazar group of papers remained Gandhian. In other words. loyal to gandhi group always loyal to gandhi group and and in this in, in the, this in this flood relief subhash chandra showed his excellent quality of organization in in planning the relief and arranging the relief teams this was a brilliant achievement and but one thing happened very bitter thing happened some persons poisoned the mind of acharya prabhu chandra that time remember even that time it is chitranjan das 
was supreme in the Bengal Congress Committee, Bengal Congress. But even that time, Gandhi was trying to divide Bengal Congress. Bengal Congress was the biggest of the all provincial Congress committees in India. Remember at that time, Congress sort has different provincial Congress committees, about 15 provincial Congress committees. Burma was also in another unit. Burma was, because Burma was under Delhi at that time. Burma, for Burma there was a Congress committee. As a whole for total Bengal and Bengal provincial committee was the biggest of all provincial congress committees. It was the mightiest at the same time and also province was the biggest one. That's why Gandhi thought if Bengal congress committee remains united that will be a challenge to authority of Gandhi. That's why Gandhi always tried to buy his loyal, loyal, loyal uh, persons, tried to divide, keep the, West, the Bengal Provincial Committee divided. And even by those persons, Gandhi tried to marginalize Deshbund. And at that time, Subhash Chandra was a growing personality. It was easy to damage to a heart Subhash Chandra. Some persons poisoned the mind of Acharya Prabhu Chandra. He resigned from the post of the chairman of the relief committee. Then Subhash Chandra has to rush very quickly to Kobi Guru. Kobi Guru came forward. Kobi Guru filled up that chair of the president of the relief committee that time. And subsequently again the relation between Shubhash Chandra and Acharya Prabhu Chandra again it was repaired. But I am giving this example for two reasons. Number one, to show the high quality of organization. For the first time, his efficiency of political organization was shown in 1921 in executing the disobedience movement, that is a non cooperation movement, non cooperation movement in 1921. And non cooperation movement 1921 was all over the country. But the most success was in Bengal <clears throat> under Chitranjan Das and organized by Subhash Chandra. Subhash Chandra was the secretary of the Bengal Provincial Committee. And also there was some success in the West, West India, in Bombay. But maximum success was in Bengal. That frightened British. That's why you will see in 21, Lord Reading sent messengers to Chitranjandas, who is in jail, for a compromise. And Lord Reading gave the offer of provincial autonomy in 1921 to Chitranjandas. I have discussed it yesterday and also sent that proposal to Madan Mohan Malabbo and Jinnah. In jail, Deshbandhu discussed it with Subhash Chandra and Deshbandhu, Subhash Chandra, Jinnah and Madan Malabiya all agreed to this. But the thing was Black, that thing was the, the whole process was disturbed by Gandhi, the egoistic Gandhi. I've discussed it yesterday. And second, second is 
his brilliant ability to organize crisis management in society crisis management flood is a national crisis flood of bengal is a national crisis almost every year that time flood was a problem subhash chandra showed in 1922 his brilliant ability of organizing flood relief in crisis situation then 1922 goya congress goya congress in goya congress all india congress speech is deshbandhu chitrangi there you know fight between the pro changer and no changer what is pro changer what is no changer no changer means the no changer policy of the gandhi of the pro gandhi groups they are they will not take the movement inside the state assemblies and central assembly on the contrary deshbandhu wanted to take the movement into the plane of assembly in discussion and debates to defeat the process of the british to make laws in state assemblies and central assemblies i have discussed this yesterday i am not repeating it pro changer is under chitranjan das groups no changer under gandhi there is a tussle in this tussle deshbandhu formed and already i have told from 1921 Deshbandhu was neither agreeing to the Khilafat movement nor agreed to non-corporation movement of this in the style as narrated as is being done by Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi, and here is the ripped open up. Deshbandhu formed Swarajya Party. within the congress taking motilal nehru the congress leader of the north of up at that time it up it, it was central central uh, central uh, it was not up it was central uh, central uttar pradesh central pradesh and and subhash chandra was given the dominant role in west in bengal chapter swarajya party was formed is yes. chitranjan das was president during the goya session of the congress when the demand for independence in place of dominion status was rejected chitranjan das with the support of motilal nehru formed a new political party in goya that is swarajya party Subhash Chandra Bose was appointed the secretary of Bengal Provincial Congress Committee and Congress Committee and also dominant role in Swarajya Party. Chitranjan Das submitted his resignation from the president post of president of the National Congress. Okay. Then I am coming to important area and 1924 1924 according to the now again subhash chandra will be arrested what is the background of this then swarajya party in in full form again subhash chandra will be arrested what is the background i am reading from a book of netaji rediscovered by kanalal bosh a few lines according to the home political department file number 61 there was a pact between chitranjan das and the revolutionaries subhash chandra bose and satyendra chandra mitra played the role of mediators according to the file number 374 of the same year at the same department subhash chandra bose satyendra chandra mitra and surendra mohan ghosh were front ranking leaders of the jugantar party 
they conspired how to smuggle in huge qualities of arms from outside into India. Subhash Chandra Bose secretly used to help the planning and to give shelter to political absconders. On this suspicion and on this suspicion and charge, Subhash Chandra is subsequently arrested from Elgin Road. In a meeting of the central of the Calcutta Corporation, the business of appointing a new chief executive officer. You all know Deshbundu is the first non-British mayor of Calcutta Corporation, non-British, non-white mayor of Calcutta Corporation. And Subhash Chandra is its first chief executive officer, non-British, of the Calcutta Corporation. Sijut Subhash Chandra Bose has been appointed the new chief executive officer. Now the approval of the government to this end is awaited. There were two candidates for the said post. Sijut Subhash Chandra Bose and Rai Bahadur Horidhan Dotto. Sijut Dotto pulled only five votes. The rest of all votes for Sijut Subhash Chandra was pulled and there is a strong rumor that all the revolutionaries arranged vote for Subhash Chandra. Being the chief executive officer Subhash Chandra was used to draw rupees 3000 as salary per mention, out of which he would take only half of the amount for himself and the rest he would donate for the service of the country. That is a precondition. Okay. And in October, this was April, his appointment as the chief executive, when Deshbandhu was the mayor. In October, Subhash Chandra Bose was arrested from Elgin Road residence in Calcutta under police regulation number 3 of the 1888 Act and imprisoned Alipur Central Jail. At that time, the, the famous statement of uh, Deshbandhu, if the chief executive of the corporation is a criminal, why not the mayor, that famous, why not the mayor? Then November, both Chitranya Das and Subhash Chandra Bose realized the necessity of a journal of its own for the corporation as such, a weekly periodical under the name Calcutta Municipal Gazette. Shantra Babu, Calcutta Municipal Gazette even today is regularly published by the Calcutta Corporation. Calcutta Municipal Gazette is a very Famous gadget. This is the brainchild of Shubhash Chandra Bush. It was first published when Deshbandhu was the mayor and Shubhash Chandra was the chief executive officer. This is the brainchild of Shubhash Chandra. And Shubhash Chandra in 1924 January, Shubhash Chandra Bush was transferred to Mandalay jail that notorious Mandalay jail in Burma at present Myanmar. On his way to Mandalay by motor van, country boat and then train, Mr. Lohman, the Assistant Inspector General of Police was all along as watchman with him. Lohman. And the revolutionaries tried to gun down this Lohman in writer's building. In May, Subhash Chandra Bose occasionally wrote letters and the, 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 all these things. All India and and then I am and he, he was not only in Mandalayal. He was transferred from Mandalayal to other notorious jails. 
different different jails you are in different jails of burma all notorious jails sunil bosh he was very very he was suffering very much in the jail then sunil bosh elder brother of subhash chandra sunil bosh is the elder brother that is the third brother third brother of third uh, the fourth brother fourth senior brother of subhash chandra he is the first cardiologist of india he is the founder secretary of the cardiological society of india first cardiologist of india he was sent to barma to examine subhash chandra sunil bose dr sunil bose elder brother of subhash chandra went to see him in mandalay jail at that point of time his body weight was reduced from 161 pounds to 138 pounds a severe a severe body weight loss due to increased virulence of his disease due to refusal of the british government to grant financial help for the durga puja subhash chandra bose along with other political prisoners resorted to hunger strike inside the mandala jail later the british government was compelled to accede to the demand of the prisoners to allow and allowed them durga puja in the prison cell and you will see long after in 1965 when when Trilokko Maharaj, writing letter to the mystery man in North India, Bhagwan Ji, Gunnoy Baba, or Mahakal, mentioning this event because at that time in the prison cell, Trilokko Maharaj was on the side of. Subhash Chandra inside the jail. Both the two agitated in demand of permission of Durga Puja inside the jail. That event was mentioned by Trilok Kumar as in that letter. That letter was found in the trunk of Gumdami Baba, which we discovered. Now that letter will be on display. in the ram temple newly constructed ram temple okay by that time chitranjan das had already passed away that's a very tragic thing when subhash chandra his best general deshbandhu's best general was in mandalay jail not only mandalay he was He was transferred to Rangoon Jail. Now, other I will I will read different jails. Deshbandhu died here in Beng in in North Bengal, Darjeeling. That is a big loss to the country, to Bengal, and to Shubhas Chandra. And for weeks in jail, Shubhas Chandra could not write letters. in his letters whatever letters are written by him from the jail in barma there is a little mention about this bondu he could not mention the moment the name of desh bondu was coming to his mind he was just crying he could not mention long after long after after many years when he somehow digested that tragic news of demise of deshbandhu he could write few lines few pages in indian style he was so shocked i will read that part of indian style which is narrated on the demise of deshbandhu <coughs> When Shubhas Chandra Bose was arrested on political grounds, 
the catholic herald a small english paper some of the english papers of bengal they protested against and some of the english papers they supported this 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 arrest there is an interesting incident there i am reading that the statesman the two other english under the advice of what what happened in 1924 when subhash chandra bose was arrested on political grounds the catholic herald a small english paper of the calcutta published an article in which subhash chandra was described as a brain behind the revolution of bengal on the basis of the said article the englishman and the statesman the two other english dailies of calcutta commented adversely against him in their columns under the advice of sarod bos subhash chandra bos filed defamation suit in the court against those three newspapers on the ground of slander subhash chandra bos owned the suit subhash chandra bos owned the suit the catholic herald and the englishman were fined rupees 4000 rupees 2000 respectively in those days the british judges even has to pass orders against the english newspapers because the court neither the newspaper authorities or the court could not prove the guilt this is the level of its secrecy this this is the he he maintained secret relations with the revolutionaries armed revolutionaries fire brand revolutionaries but none could produce evidences in the court that much secrecy maintained is a master master piece of secrecy maintaining secrecy he was transferred from mandalay jail to rangoon central jail then he was again from Rangoon Central Jail to Insin Jail. Of these three jails, only Rangoon Central Jail was a bit little better jail, and the first jail, Mandala, the notorious jail, notorious. And I have already mentioned that to this Mandala jail, only four All India level revolutionaries were imprisoned. One is Lajpat Rai. Other is Balmahar Tilak, Shubhas Chandra Bose, another very big farmer movement leader of the North India. I have forgotten the name. Only all these four figures were were kept under jail in this notorious jail of Mandala. Gandhians and Nehru Gandhis can imagine the notorious conditions of this jail. I will not talk much today. i just today something i will i will i will i will keep one thing i will just just mention on the side on the issue of issue how the bengal congress committee was kept divided by the gandhi nehru for decades from the days of chitranjan das gandhi always tried to marginalize corner deshbandhu inside the congress gandhi was never a man logical a man intellectual never all his politics was by personal approaches personal management discussion debate was not in his blood discussion and debate was logic arguments scientific approaches was never in his in his blood and the arguments logic scientific approaches rational approaches these are the these are of deshbandhu these are of jinna and definitely of shubhas chandra and never of mohandas in mohandas's mind something some something springs up flashes in the brain yes in his own language in the madman's mind
mind, in the mind of mad persons, some ideas flashes, springs, and the mad persons follow those ideas. Mad persons do not follow any argument, discussion, and debate. No logical thinking. This is Gandhi. This is best narrated by in the diary of Romarola, which he noted after Romarola's discussion with Gandhi in 1931. The best is the best thing, and also the, the, the best exposure of Gandhi's mindset. This illogical, mad, illogical, fanatic mindset will be shown in the discussion of Mohandas with, 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 with the Arkotha Sahityik, Sarat Chandra Chandrapadha, the discussion. The fanatic mind, illogical mind is expressed. Now, I will read only, I will not enter into the serious events which will be, in, I think, the serious events will come after we see the, the, in the in the coming chapters. In the coming days, I will enter into its banishment in the Europe and relations in the different countries of Europe. His international views. Then, is in another chapter, I will discuss his return to India, becoming the president of the All India Congress. Then first election in Indian Congress, before that his, his making of the planning commission and then his compulsion to resign from the post of president and his exit. These are the serious chapters. I will enter into that chapters step by step. And definitely request has come in continuity to make few episodes on the mystery chapter in the same episode. Naturally, I have to bring before you authenticated documents of its presence on this world after 1945, so-called plane Now, I will, I will, I will be, I will, yes, I will just today read out read out on no sorry sorry see others yes see others i will just read out what he has written written in the indian struggle after 33 he has written this after 33 in indian struggle the death of deshbandhu on June 16, 1925, was for India a national calamity of the first magnitude. Though his active political career consisted of barely five years, his rise had been phenomenal. With the reckless abandon of Vaishnava devotee, he had plunged into the political movement with heart and soul and he had given not only himself but his all in his fight for such. When he died, whatever worldly possessions he still had were left to the nation. By the government, he was both feared and admired. They feared his strength but admired his character. They knew that he was a man of his word. They knew that he was a man of his word. That means the man is predictable. The man is readable. Though man is astute, very intelligent, very articulate. But this is the enemy. And Deshbandhu is opposition, but the British respect him. He is a man with which dialogue can be made, discussion can be made, a process can be started with him. He can be depended on. 
But Gandhi is not dependable. Gandhi is not dependable. They knew that he was a man of his word. They also knew that though he was a hard fighter, he was nonetheless a clean fighter. And further, he was also the man with whom they could bargain for a settlement. He was a clean-headed person. His political instinct was sound and unerring and unlike Mahatma, clear, unlike Mahatma. He was fully conscious of the role he was to play in Indian politics. He was clear about that. He knew more than anyone else that situation favorable for the wrestling of political power from the enemy do not come often. And when they do come, they do not last long. When the Lord Reading offered him the proposal of provincial autonomy, that proposal came only once. And very quickly he, he agreed to accept that because this proposal will not come repeatedly. Because at that moment, British was very much cornered, very much cornered inside Bharat Borsu and internationally. In that international compulsive situation, British was compelled to offer him this state autonomy, provincial autonomy. And Deshbandhu knew that this offer will not come repeatedly or will come second or third time. He did not make any delay. He quickly accepted that. And Deshbandhu consulting with Subhash Chandra in the jail and Jinnah and Madan Mohan Malaviya agreed. Only Mohandas Gandhi sabotaged it. And we got that out provincial autonomy after 16 years and that's for the mistake of Gandhi, Ego, for the egoistic Gandhi. I have discussed this yesterday. That he is mentioning, Shubhas Chandra is mentioning in his biography, Indian study. While the crisis lasts, a bargain has to be struck. When the crisis, when the British is in crisis, a deal can be made. The moment British comes out of the crisis, British will not negotiate with you. That's that that wisdom you must have. He knew also that to sponsor a settlement when public enthusiasm is at its height needs much courage and may involve a certain amount of unpopularity. I have told you many a time a real leader, a real statesman must have that courage to take even an unpopular step. Always popular step cannot be good for the nation. Sometimes the statesmen need to have an unpopular step. General people, general people are not the wise people. General people do not know what is good for them, good for the country. This is all the wise men knows. <coughs> Diplomats statesmen, not all politicians, not all politicians. But he was nothing, but he was nothing, if not fearless. A statesman is nothing, if not fearless. If not, the, if not he has the courage to take an unpopular risk, unpopular step. He was conscious of his ex exact role, namely that of the practical politician. And he was therefore never afraid of quoting unpopularity. In contrast with this Bundu, <coughs> the, role of, the role of Mahatta has not been clear one. The role of Gandhi is not clear. In many ways, he was altogether a, an idealistic man, a visionary man, but 
at times he is an obstinate gandhi at times gandhi is obstinate as a fanatic as a fanatic in the rumarura's diary he is a lunatic in the diary of rumarula gandhi is a lunatic and and in the and i have read yesterday in the eye of many top gandhians and animation gandhi is a madman the instinct of judgment so necessary for political bargaining is lacking in him lacking in gandhi many things he has written on gandhi please read this i am going to the next page in june 1924 proved to be a turning point in the recent history of india the disappearance of the towering personality of deshbandhu from the political arena was for india a colossal misfortune a colossal misfortune the swarajya party which owed so much to him was paralyzed after his death and this and dissensions gradually arose within the party nevertheless party at the time of his death was an institution of which anyone would be proud the capital of calcutta the organ of british commercial interest writing after his death compared the swaraj party with the sin fin party of ireland and remarked that during 40 years of its existence it had seen nothing like it before the discipline of the party according to the paper was german in character and the weakening of the swaraj party served a strength to the forces of reaction in india and in england while it let loose the flood of communal strife in india which had up till then been held back by the superior forces of nationalism what subhas bose is writing after the death of deshbandhu swarajya party gradually became weak and for this weakness in congress reactionary forces took strength only for the weakness of swarajya party in congress reactionary forces took st to got strength reactionary forces got strength in congress and reactionary forces got strength in india also in britain the strong words subhash chandra is 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 using yes because the communal forces reactionary forces islamist forces got footage inside the congress because the swarajya party who was a truly a nationalist force the moment that nationalist force went down in congress the congress became the platform of the communalist forces divisive forces today as we look back to the year 1925 we cannot help fearing that if providence had spared this bondhu for a for a years for a few years more the history of india would probably have taken a different turn in the affairs of nations it often happens that the appearance or disappearance of a singular personality often means a new chapter in the history thus has been the influence of lenin in russia mussolini in italy and hitler in germany in recent world history the demise of deshbandhu in indian politics is a colossal disaster and that give birth to the establishment 
of the communal forces, reactionary forces inside the Congress. Such strong words to Ashtar Guruji using. And also, when Deshbandhu was in very sick, in very sick and sick bed, there is a conspiracy against Swarajya Party, against Deshbandhu, was hatched between Mutilal Nehru and Mohandas Gandhi in Bombay. There was a conspiracy that gradually Mutilal will distance himself from Swarajya Party and Deshbandhu will betray him. And Gandhi will step by step hand over province after province, the Congress committees to the senior Nehru and junior Nehru. That was the conspiracy. That is clearly written in the volume, the Jinnah Pakistan by Stanley Woolpart. That is to some extent being exposed by the new writings in in, 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 in in the magazine yesterday mentioned by a by historian ex IS office IS officer Tapan Chattopadhyay. He is, he has that courage to speak up these areas. There is a conspiracy between Mohandas Gandhi and Motilal Nehru. That conspiracy was hatched when Gandhi went to Bombay to stay in the summer house of the in in Bombay of Motilal Nehru. He stayed there for few weeks. This conspiracy was laid down there. Motilal will distance himself from Swarajya Party and Shiardash. And in exchange, Gandhi will hand over province after province, Congress committees to the hand of the senior Nehru and junior Nehru. That was the conspiracy. I have discussed on that area in the past, if needed, I will again discuss. That is documented in that volume, Jinnah of Pakistan by Stanley Ulpant, the conspiracy. Gandhi was neighbor, an intellectual man, and after Deshbundu, particularly one by one, Tilak died, then Deshbundu died. Then Lajpat Rai died, Bipin Chandrapal marginalized. And in this, in that way, all intellectuals died, disappeared. And the Congress became a platform of lesser intellectuals. This is the lesser intellectuals. The term is used by Shubhas Chandra in India in the Indian, uh, Indian struggle. Congress became the platform of lesser intellectuals. Gandhi is a lesser intellectual. At least Motila Nehru, though a selfish man, an egoistic man, he was always trying to establish his junior, Sean Junior Nehru, in the Congress affairs to make him the leader. He has, he has his agenda. But still, then, Motila Nehru was a man of some dialogue and discussion because he was a practicing lawyer, practicing leader. Though Motilal Nehru also is not a barrister, he had only a, a certificate given by the lawyers of England, that is, got the gentleman certificate. Motilal Nehru had the Gentleman certificate of a barrister, gentleman certificate, not the barrister proper. But however, he was a man with whom some discussion and dialogue could be made. But it is not Gandhi. Gandhi was never a man of discussion and dialogue. Though Motilal Nehru was, had his own agenda to establish the worthless son Nehru. Worthless son in Congress leadership and that he did with a, with a conspiratorial compromise with Gandhi by sabotaging Deshbund and 
by trying to sabotage this bundu marginalize this bundu and marginalize jinnah or that side and shubhas chandra this side this is the history let me stop here today